and welcome to the Odds Checker podcast. We are previewing day two of the Goodwood Festival. To my right is Andy Holding, Odds Checker's horse racing tipster, who will be releasing a column every day of Goodwood and, and basically every day of the year as well uh, on his tips for the day's race. Unbelievable. <laughs> people would be absolutely gutted if you did, yeah. Andy. Would be, there'd be wars. Uh, and to my left is, is professional punter uh, Mike Spence as well, who um, we've spoken about your, your horse running on the, uh, on, the, in, on the Tuesday in positive, and you've got another runner on the Wednesday as well? Yeah, Salute the Soldier runs in the, the last race on the Wednesday. So we'll get to that at the end of the pod. So there's a little teaser there to make sure you listen <laughs> or watch the whole way through uh, as Mike talks about his, his runner there. But we're going to start um, with the uh, Goodwood Handicap, and we are recording this on uh, Monday at about 11.15, which isn't ideal for Wednesday racing because um, you know the markets are currently reforming. Um, we have currently got Little, Little Rockefeller at 5-1, to one, uh, Dabawi 50 at 7-1, to one, True Destiny at 9-1, to one, uh, Timoshenko at 10-1, to one, uh, the Grand Vizier, who anyone who watched the uh, or listened to the Ascot preview will know that um, Mike put up at about 25, 33 to 1. It went up about 12-1 to one and uh, provided us with a very handy winner uh, that day as well. Uh, the Cashel Man, 12 to 1, early summer, 12 to 1. So, Andy, come to you first here. Um, uh, I know that maybe it's difficult now with the <laughs> handicaps, but who are, you, who are you looking at? I think the starting point has to be a little Rockefeller, doesn't it? Um, winner of this race last year in sensational fashion. Everyone thought that he was a good thing. I think he went off, was it 6 to 4 or something mm. ridiculous? Is it a very, very tight price anyway, if I remember rightly? Um, and he absolutely lapped them, um, was in total command all the way through, as his handicap mark suggested he might be. I can't remember what he ran off in compared to what he is now. Um, £17. Pounds £17. Pounds lap. But all, let, even taking into that account, he still could be quite well handicapped based on what he, he, he's achieved over hurdle, hurdles, hurdles and over fences. He's a genuine sort of grade two horse at mm. his very best over hurdles. I think this is one of the only races he can run in because he's got a bit of an aversion to the stalls. Is that right? If I remember, yeah, he can't. Um, he can yeah. only run in races which have got a tape start. That's which right. Near enough limits him to. Which is pretty much this race this. and nothing else, yeah. <laughs> unless you go to the Curra. I don't think they race from stalls um, in their two and a half mile races or two mile races. So look, you know, he's he's got to have a great chance again, isn't it? I wouldn't wouldn't concern me if he hadn't had a run for a while either. He tends to go well fresh. Neil King knows what he's doing with him. Perfectly respectable chance. Um, True Destiny is very much on the improve. I like the way he won at York. Uh, Roger Charlton's always thought he was better than the, sort of like a 60, 70 rated handicapper, which effectively he was running off uh, in the all weather campaign and now he's really gone through the, the ranks. The, there is one horse, however, in this race that might not necessarily be a familiar name to many UK punters. And it's a bit of a, a surprise inclusion to me as well, I must admit. Because I put up a horse called Party Playboy um, last time out at Bellystown, their three-day festival. And it was one of those races where I still can't believe it got beat. Um, it got beat by a whirlwind finish of um, Willie Mullins. It's called Diamond Hill, who they think quite a bit of. Um, I think the Mies, the Mies own him. But in hindsight, Lou McGuinness, who rode, rode Party Playboy, went crazily mad on him he took it up going down the back straight he was going that well it's a long way from home at Bellystown kicked and got the race put to bed thought oh yeah he's won and he just faltered late on only because of the aggressive ride not because he didn't stay it was just he just asked him to do too much too soon uh, but he went through that race like I thought he was like the well handicapped horse I thought he was because previously he'd won a handicap at Down Royal uh, in a very fast time beating two horses of Gavin Cromwell's one of them called Peaches and Cream who won by 10 lengths the next day um, but I thought he'd guarantee to run at Galway. I saw he was, he was entered in two races at Galway. He was entered on the flat, and he was ent- funny enough, he was entered in the, the Connaught Handicap today, the big two mile one race yeah. for amateur riders. Whether he didn't get in or not, I don't know. But he was also entered in a very good handicap hurdle. And who knows, he might, he might go back home and run at, run at the Galway Festival, such as the, the um, audaciousness of the trainers nowadays. But I think he's quite well handicapped this horse. They've gone out of their way to book. Hayley Turner um, and she can do eight stone which is rather handy um, and this horse is in really good nick at the moment because I've, I've watched him in his last three or four runs in on he's right on top of his game and he can run really hard for a long long way so just on the basis of what I know about UK 
jumpers in inverted commas, um, your likes of Zubair, yeah. um, Leo Rockefeller, etc., etc. This fella wouldn't be a million miles behind that lot, and he's right. He's a twenty-five to one shot. I can hear the excitement in your voice, Andy, as we talk about it. Twenty-five to one. He's at the moment definitely going to be on there, providing the price sticks up. Right. Well, let's hope it does. <laughs> hope no one watches this then. Um, Mike. Obviously, we don't think that. Um, who are you? Who are you looking at uh, in this? In this I think that's a Wednesday? pretty good shout. The Irish one. Um, I didn't think it was a very good race, personally. No. Um, I put up the Grand Vizier at Ascot, and he won well, but. I don't really understand what's going on with his headgear though. He had a tongue tie on that day and he won. He did everything right. And then they put cheap pieces on him at Newbury. And he was a bit disappointing, albeit that was a hard race. But now they take everything off him. So I, I'd struggle to really back him today, even though I think he's talented and obviously he's going back up in trip. But to take a tongue tie off is, is quite a, a big question mark for me because you always wonder what made them put it on in the first place. Um, and so I would struggle to really back him. Um, I'm not a weights and measures man, just interjection, but I can't believe he'll give two stones to party playboy. Mm. And yet he's half the odds, is he? Yeah. Grand Vizier? Well, I'm sure it would just I mean, be the Irish. 12 to 1, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, oh, of his God, Irish. That, that just can't be right, can it? <laughs> just The basic maths of that just, just isn't right. No, I, I, I think that that's a very good shout. I think For me, though, I, I, I think this race <coughs> revolves around Lil Rockefeller. If he turns up like he did last year, I, that, he just he won't get beat. There's, I just don't think. I just think he's in a different league. He won so well last year that a seventeen pound rise I didn't think was going to be enough to stop him. And then you're essentially taking the price of whether Sylvester's going to get the fractions right because he was about twenty lengths clear going down the back straight last year. Is he going to do too much? And, and is he the same horse as last year? He probably is in. The, just as good, but he is a year older now. Um, I think five to one's a pretty fair price about him. I don't mm. think this is a great yeah, race. I'd be happy to back mm -hmm. him at fives. Um, and then I'd be looking for a bit of an angle into something else. I think all of these English stairs, I'd be surprised if they were good enough. Mm. Just because their form, I mean, the likes of True Destiny are improving. What, I'm, what I mean by that is you need something that, that's improving. You know, the likes of, of Fun Mac and and Dubawi 50, I mean, they are, they are. I, I think, I don't think that form, that level of form will be good enough to win. I think something will have to take a step forward here. And I'd be wanting to take a price on something that, that could step forward. And Lil Rockefeller and Party Playboy certainly follows in, falls into that. And then, yeah, True Destiny, as you mentioned, um, I think he's improving. Uh, for me, it revolves around Lil Rockefeller. I, th I think 99 isn't the level, the, sort of top limit of his ability on, on the flat. And they, I'm sure this race will have been the plan for a year. Yeah. Well, um, since, <laughs> yeah. since exactly last a year. year. And uh, just having a look through as well, never been out the three after a 50 or more day break as well. So um, it clearly goes well for Ash and that, that break since uh, Cheltenham, uh, since the Coral Cup, shouldn't be much of an issue. And as you say, so impressive last year. And if we're talking about course form, then it doesn't get much better. Um, so Lil Rockefeller um, at five to one currently, as I say, not many firms are out because, um, you know, the, the declared entry is still um, only just coming in. A bit of 11 to two now. There we go. Hills have just uh, just opened up at 11 to two. And um, Party Playboy for Andy um, is 25 to one still. So 25 to one, that is with Betfair Sportsbook. Um, on to the <coughs> second race of the day now. And uh, that is the Unibet Handicap, um, where we've got... A uh, fairly open field. As I say price is still kind of coming out as we go. Um, Le Don de V is six to one favourite. Seemingly only three six five pricing up at the moment. So these odds very much subject to change depending on uh, when you're listening or watching this. Um, Saron Priestley and Kochu. I mean, I'm not going to try it. I don't <laughs> think uh, Kochuchuko. Let's go for seven to one. Um, Durston and Desert Icon nine to one. Tribal Craft ten to one. Um, I've missed out Eminence, who's in there eight to one as well. So. Uh, Andy, I'll come to you first here. Um, obviously, this race is massively cut up since uh, you probably last looked at the mm -hmm. uh, looked at it a few hours ago. Um, but who's still in there that, that you think could go well? I do like these three-year-old staying handicaps. Um, I think the best one run so far was obviously the um, uh, Ascot version, in which Eminence, I think, was third in, and behind his stab of companion, South Pacific. He fluffed his lines next time at Fairy House, but they dropped him back in trip, which is a bit of an oddity. 
Um, but I think he's got to have a great chance. I haven't seen his price, but I'd imagine he'd be close to favourite Eminence. Eminence eight to one. Yeah, that's not it's not a bad price, that to be fair. Uh, Mark Johnson obviously got to be respected. Whatever he runs here, he, he would have a whole dearth of horses to run year in um, week in week out, and almost in these kind of handicaps. Persian Moon, I just think he's looking very slow stroke one pace. I'm not convinced on him. So Ron Priestley's best form seems to have come in big fields. Any time small fields, any time they ran him in a big field, Ascot he bombed. Um, and mind the crack was. I suppose this is a little bit underwhelming next time out. So I'm looking at beyond the obvious here. Um, and there's a, I think it's a filly um, trying by Andrew Balding Tribal called Craft. Tribal Craft, who's been a bit of a slow burn. They, they, ran a bit, they ran her at Sandown first time. Actually, caught me all that day. She went into my track of me on Pondus, and that race has worked out really well. A whole host of winners, Net Roos, and uh, a lot of handicap winners have come out of that race. Um, step to... Step to up next time out, back back to went to Salisbury on soft ground, more test of stamina, won very very comfortably, didn't beat a great deal. Time figure wasn't exactly off the scale, but next time, she won by twenty lengths. Now, <laughs> the, the horse that she beat was a horse called Mankayan, and I remember doing the podcast here for Royal Ascot, and this horse Mankayan was a 25, 33 to one shot for the Queen's Vars, didn't run in it, which I was annoyed about because they ended up getting lots of rain. And that horse, Mankind, won in a very fast time at Salisbury the time before. Beat three, three subsequent winners, the second, third and fourth all won. So I thought Mankind was a good thing to beat this travel crafty the night at uh, Pontifax. Didn't put it up, obviously, on the podcast. It was too short. Uh, on the, on the yeah. site, it was too short. It's a even money each or two job. Eh? He got slaughtered 20 lengths by this travel craft. <laughs> now, whether Mankind was suffering from... I don't know, something or whether Charlie Fellows' horses weren't running up to scratch, I don't know. But there was 59 lengths back to the, four, to the third. It absolutely bolted up, this thing did. It just seemed to be running at a different level to Mankayan, who's not a bad tool. Um, the, the handicapper, didn't, I suppose, doesn't really know what to do there. He's given a, a mark of 89. Yeah. But considering the second horse is thought of a, in pattern terms by Charlie Fellows, one of his long, long-term projects... 89 could be quite well in here. Well, Charlie's horse has been, you know, performing pretty well for the last yeah. couple of months, but surely you have to assume that that, that, that horse wasn't running to form there. Well, it, it, it was one of those things where it was, it was almost too bad to pursue. It's flat to the boards for yeah. and that. It was either flat to the boards because this thing's a tool <laughs> or the horse wasn't quite right. I can't really work out which one's which. Sadly, I, we own the third, so I think it's the latter, right? Because ours is useless. Well, yeah. <laughs> that, that, might, that might well be the case. But this ours one, went past that, then four yeah. out. <laughs> well, they, they, I mean, I think, this, I think this could be a fair horse, this tribal craft. Um, and, like I say, a mark of 89 doesn't look too... too, um, too um, Ten to insurm- one. Insurmountable. So, Ten to one at the moment. Oh, yeah, I'd be, quite keen, I'd be quite keen on her. I, I do like the balding... Strike Jeff Smith ang- angle here. He only tends to run his horses in these colours if Jeff's got something that is worthy of running here. And Andrew Baldwin will just go, oh, OK, we'll run it for a social day. I, I, he's struck so many times in these colours at this meeting. It's got to be indicative that he only runs his best ones with best chances. Uh, I think his winter run ratio for these colours has got to be very high. Desert Icon won the Barbary Cup last time out in a good time figure. A bit horse called Kiefer, who didn't handle the ground at Ascot on Saturday. They were worried about the ground for him. They ran him because I think they need to get a run into him yeah. to, to run in the Melrose, which I think is his ultimate target. So that's the kind of level that Desert Icon's at. Um, and I think he's, the, he's the, the one, the next best. So I'd probably, at this stage, I haven't seen the price, but I'll, I'll probably be going two against the field here, Desert Icon and, and Tribal Craft. Desert Icon and Tribal Craft. Desert mm-hmm. Icon, nine to one, Tribal Craft. 10 to 1. Perfect. Perfect. Both each way. But I mean, each I, way I, pleasure. I need to remind mm. everyone that this, these are basically tissue prices at the moment because only 365 have come out since um, the decks. Mike? I think it's, it's just on Sir Ron Priestley. I wouldn't really... The, he didn't... On Ascot, I just think it was the ground. It just He likes fast ground. And if it, were, if it were to rain, again, you wouldn't want to be with Sir Ron Priestley. But and also, I also personally don't like the fact he's dropping in trip. Um... If it were to rain a lot and the weather was to change, Durston would run very well at the bottom, but he really wouldn't want it very quick, and he might not run if it didn't rain. Um, I agree about Tribal Craft. I think she's got in light off 89, despite the fact... I, I, do, I do think last time's probably a race to ignore, but at the same time, I do think she's a very good filly, and I think her first two runs were very good, and I, I do think she's in lightly off 89. Um, 
she'll run very well. But the one for me, which has also been mentioned, I think he could have a loss in hand here. It's Desert Icon. Um, I was really impressed with him last time. He beat that Kiefer, and, and as, um, as we pointed out already, Kiefer didn't handle the ground at yeah. Ascot. He'd been a non-runner about six days before at Newbury when it had gone soft. And you, you just can't keep bringing these horses to the boil and coming off. So they, I imagine they ran because he didn't have any other options. Um, and they probably wanted to get a run into him anyway. Um, and Desert Icon, I mean, they, I think they got it wrong with him when they dropped him down in trip. They dropped him down to a mile. Um, but this is not the first time that William Haggis has managed to... I'm going to put it as managed to get one beat on its third start in a novice, having won its second. And personally feel that William Haggis has got the system mastered at the moment because he's now he have to run three times to get a handicap mark rather than twice if you win. And I think William Haggis is placing these horses to their disadvantage on their third start so that they get a lovely handicap mark. And... It couldn't be more obvious than this. Have to call the lawyers after this, I, I know. <laughs> well, he's gone from a mile. He's staying at a great run over a mile. He's gone up to ten, one of the, the stiffest ten around at Ponty. He's won really well. He's a sea of the stars that's bred to be a lovely stare, and then he drops it back to a mile. Runs perfectly well, but you know it doesn't take long. And within a month, a month later, he's back up to a mile and a half, mm. and, and posts a really good figure, running green, and, and wins a really nice race. Um, you know, it's all part of their education. You know, you drop them in trip and they can run really well. You, you never do any harm to a horse dropping them in trip. All they're going to do is do their best work late on. Um, and that's what this horse did. And he's got a lovely handicap mark as a result. Um, 85, he won very well. And I think 92, I'd be very surprised if this horse wasn't rated significantly higher. He's got an entry in, entry in the Great Voltage at York um, in August, um, which just shows how highly they rate this horse. And... I'd be a bit surprised if, if he didn't prove to be the best handicapped horse in the race, albeit he's still very raw in himself. And, and going somewhere like Goodwood against these very tough, hardy Mark Johnson horses can, can be a real test. Um, I mean, some of Mark Johnson's have run more this year than he has in his entire life. Um, but I, I think 92, I'm, I'm, so, I'm sure that won't be the limit of his ability. And I re would really be on side with Desert Icon here. Desert Icon currently 9-1, to one, and we've got both the experts here very keen on his chances. Uh, on to the Molecombe now, um, where we have Liberty Beach is the 2-1 to one favourite. Uh, Maven 9-4, to four, Hand on My Heart and Air Force Jet 10-1, to one, Dr Simpson 12-1, to one, Alligator Alley 14-1, to one, and 20-1 to one Bar. Um, so we've got, again, only a couple of firms out, 365 and Hills, Hills um, have the top best price on the top two at twos and nine to four. Three six five have them closer, um, at thirteen to eight and seven to four, and, and, and you know further ahead of the field as well. Uh, Mike, are you looking at this as a as a match bet, or do you think there are some of those at, at double figure prices who can who can come into the fold? I, th I think it's a bit more open than the betting suggests. I wanted to be with Liberty Beach, but the two to one is probably a fair price. The thirteen to eight with three six five seems skinny. Um, at the same time, I'd be very surprised if Maven was able to give the weight away here, and especially the weight for age then away again to Liberty B. So I'd be looking for something else. I think the, the form of Air Force Jack is very good. I think he bumped into a good horse last time, and I don't, don't think he's got an awful lot to find. Um, I'd almost take a chance with Hand on my, on my Heart of Clive Cox's. He's had Ryan Moore booked here from an early stage. And she was also entered in the Phillies conditions race later on the day. And they choose to go for this, which personally I'd, I'd have gone for the Phillies conditions race. But it's quite taking that they go for this. And he ran her in a conditions race, a hot race at Windsor on her debut. Um, I mean, she couldn't, she couldn't have done any better than she did. The time was relatively good, but it wasn't mind-blowing. But at the same time, I think she could improve a lot. And again, she gets the weight from Maven. And I'd be happy to chance her at 12 to 1. Um, it doesn't really look to me like there's a proper group two, group one level sprinter in here. And <clears throat> I don't think they're going to have to run to that higher mark to win. And, and for the Colts to give away three pounds to the Phillies, I'd almost be tempted to give her a chance. I, I think she's, she's spread to be very good. And I think with Ryan Moore booked at 12 to one, I, 
I'd be I'd be backing her. And that twelves has gone. It's ten to one now, but uh, but you never know. They might open up bigger. Uh, Andy. Oh, I think this is a fascinating race. I've really enjoyed watching the, the two old races so far this season. Um, Should I point out how many um, of the two old races did you uh, tip up the winner in the Ascot? Um, oh, yeah. So all, all but the last one, I think. Yeah, and I, I made a mess of that, really, because Pinatubo was going to be my pick all week, and then I changed my mind at the last minute trying to be too clever. Anyway. Um, I think you did okay, didn't you? Yeah, it was all right. Yeah, it could have done worse. That's the, but, but to be fair, I was having... It's outside yours, isn't it? To, yeah, to be fair, I was having a couple in each race, so it wasn't exactly like every race I was going for the number, you know, one all the time. Yeah. Um, but I do think the Queen Mary was a good race this year, um, and the time figure was good. And the subsequent performances of everything behind Raffle Prize, including Raffle Prize... Just says that it's a, it was just probably an above average renewal. Um, Liberty Beach, obviously, who was the winner, uh, moral winner on the far side, they split into two groups. Um, she's gone on to win in incredibly good fashion next time out. Again, clocking a very good number. Mighty Spirit, who was six, ran really well in the super sprint. Uh, a horse called Shard, Shadda, Shadda, 13th of Andrew Baldings, has won next time out in um, decent company. It's just a classy, classy race. Um, so I think Liberty Beach is is the right favourite, without shadow of a doubt. Sometimes you think, oh, I want to be taking this on. Uh, I think you'd be foolish to, to disagree otherwise. She's just got a lovely attitude. And, and when the Quins have got a good two-year-old, they tend to maintain their form pretty much throughout the season. Another wow factor many years ago, um, that horse that horse of theirs, I always seem to remember. Senior forget Caballero. Senior Caballero, of course, was a, was a very good two-year-old as well. I think this this filly is probably one of their better ones, if not the best. I, w- I was a bit underwhelmed by Maven's performance last time out on the continent. I think when ran at Chantilly, it looked like it was going to win by about three or four lengths and completely f- died in the last 50 yards. And within, with another two strides, it would have been gobbled up by a fast-finishing horse called Jolie. Um, who's finished well beaten behind Al Ali who got beat who got well beat next time out so I think that one's the 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 red herring of the race that one's been put in at a very short price because of the Tory Wesley Ward but I think he could be out on his feet late on because they're going to go a million here you've got Dr Simpson hand on my heart um Rahi Rahi as well he, I tell you, he's not a million miles off these as well, Rahi. I'll, t- I'll talk about him just very, very quickly. Um, I do work for George Scott, and we, we talk quite often, and, and we've always thought he was a decent horse, and he clocked a very good time at Lingfield last time out, and the form has worked out quite well, not spectacularly well. Cool Force has run well since, and the second X Force won at Wolverhampton next time out, but he did it in a very fast time, and he's worked subsequently. He's been very good. George has been very happy with him at home. He said he's improved immeasurably. He's really strengthened up, grown up physically, mentally. And my, my instructions, if they're, if they're worth anything, were whatever you do, don't try and make the run in here. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. he, 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 work, he, he can work in behind horses, which, you know, um, he's going to be a handy thing to do here rather than go organs blazing from the front. So 20 to 1 for Rahi, based on my numbers, I keep, he's not far behind the very best here. That includes the likes of Liberty Beach. But the way I'd probably see, get this race wrapped up would be to put up Liberty Beach as the obvious one as a win bet and a 20 to 1 Rahi uh, a small each way bet as a cover and if, you, and if you're both happy to take on Maven maybe looking at the without Liberty Beach market tomorrow that as well. would be another angle as well because then you've got four places for Rahi so and you're making Maven, Maven fa- short price favourite yeah, as well exactly, yeah exactly yeah. so I don't know Rahi might be 10 to 12 to 1 without, without Liberty Beach perfect anything more to add on the Malcolm? no I liked Rahi as well but yeah, I think I think Liberty Beach would be. She she's so solid at the top of the market. Yeah. She is solid, but um, if she is six to four, then I'd probably watch her win as well. On to the Sussex Stakes now for what looks like another fascinating renewal. Two Don Hot is the five to four favourite. Circus Maximus is in and is five to two. Phoenix of Spain six to one. Lord Glitters ten to one. Sixteen to one bar. Um, currently looks like just about I think eight runners as it stands at the moment eight runners currently so um, a chance for some each way value um, you'd have thought Andy coming to you first yeah not a race that makes a huge amount of appeal betting weight betting wise for me but these kind of you know conditions races where you've got a short prize favorite 
uh, unless I can see something obvious each way, like you know, across counter, then I tend just to just uh, they pass me by a little bit. I love watching them and for what they're worth. They're a great spectacle, and um, if you like, they're more for the purists. Um, and when I look at what I've got a chance to bet on, what I've got a chance to put up on odd checkered throughout the course of a week, you know, too darn hot. I'm just going to get, you know, custard pie, don't I, if I put that at four point win at even money or something like that. It's <laughs> well, not if it wins. Any, any, anyone could do that on a, on a, on a race like this. Um, and I've got more bigger fish to fry during the week. You know, there's Galway, you know, when I'm six, seven to one, the field handicaps, they're more my bag. But purely on what we saw at Ascot, this does look a two in a race between Circus Maximus and Two Darn Hot. For one reason, Two Darn Hot, it's just taken a while to come to hand. Yeah. Whether it's just been, I don't know, a combination of factors that have prevented him from running his absolute best. He's been in the wrong part of the track, the ground's not been quite right. Maybe a mile, I don't know. He's, he's mile, the mile, a, 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 a bridge too far for him, I don't know. But he was very good the other day when they took him to Deauville. Dropped him back to seven. Beat Space Blues, of course, ran well in the, the jersey. Other good horses well, well beat that day. It's just been a master, a, 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 a kind of like a, a presentation of, of how to go about resurrecting a horse's supposed flagging fortunes, watching John Gosden go to work on this too darn hot when other trainers would have probably um, gone down the wrong road. Because um, he looked like going the wrong way completely, but you know his performance last time out suggested he just about got him right. He's just come right, and he's worked at him, worked at him, and he seems to be a better horse than he was at Ascot. And if that's the case, and he's got a good chance of turning the former army circus Maximus, uh, who got the benefit of a better ride that day, on the day, um, I don't really see that many others being good enough, if I'm being honest. Lord Glitters is definitely better at Ascot on a straight track, so he's accidental agent. Um, Phoenix of Spain has obviously got to improve on what he did. He got he got the benefit of making all on that Golden Highway the first yeah. time out when he won the Irish t uh, 2000 Guinea, but then was fully exposed next time out um, in the in the Prince of in the um, not the Prince of Wales was it the Prince of Wales? St James's yeah. Palace, I beg your pardon. So look, you know, I'll let Mike probably um, talk more eloquently about this race than I, than I can, but um, two darn hot probably will probably win. Mike, um, if it doesn't rain, I'm probably going to have a really big bet on two darn hot odds against. I think he'll go, if it doesn't rain, and when I mean rain, I mean poor. If it doesn't rain, I think he'll go off eight to 11. So five to four, I think it's a cracking price. He just, I just thought he was a non-stare ascot. I thought he ran very well. He was quick as three to two and two to one. And, and then I just didn't think he got home. It was so soft and very stiff eight. I just don't think that, that suited him. I thought actually the, the, that was the first time this year that I thought he was back to his best. And then he showed that last time over seven. I mean, the, the, the worry is the eight, stepping back up to eight. But it's a lot easier than Ascot here. And if the ground's a lot quicker, I mean, it's going to ride half a furlong quicker than what it did at Ascot. Um, he just looks better than he ever has done throughout this year now, and he's had a proper break and a proper training campaign now. Um, five to four looks looks very very big against I these. Be on, yeah. um, Circus Maximus, I'd be amazed if he he beats too darn hot here if they're both on their A game. Phoenix of Spain was very sore after Ascot. He'd probably for me be the one that I'd, I'd call the danger. I would have had him second favourite. I'm surprised Circus Maximus is so so short. He had the run of the race at Ascot. Probably like the gram, the stiff test of stamina. I just, I'd be, unless it, I mean, it would really need to go, even if it was soft, I'd rather have Phoenix of Spain on my side than Circus Maximus here. Um, and I just, I, the others, I, I'd be amazed if, I'd be disappointed if the race was to fall apart so much that the others were able to win. Lord Glitters needs a really stiff mile where they come back to him. And he's very good at Ascot, but he's not as good elsewhere. Yeah, for me it revolves around two darn hot. I'd still be back if it didn't rain. I'd be backing him at even money, and there's five to four available now. Um, and I do think he'll go off eight to eleven if it doesn't rain. So it seems like two darn hot is the selection, um, or at least it's it's the fancied one for both of them and, and the bet for Mike. Um, those are the only four races that are priced up currently on the second day of Goodwood. Um, is your sorry cut? <laughs> you sure it was entered? Yeah, number one. Yeah, it's just We've different colours. <laughs> Yeah. Cool. Mm. Um, so the soldier. Cool. Yeah, I, I actually have. I really fancy one in the race before. Okay, perfect. If you we'll want to mention that. 
um, the ah, 445. I'd just ignore the 410. Yeah, fine. Okay, cool. there, but if it, yeah, that's it. good. Right. So those are the uh, first four races, which are the ones that are priced up at the moment. But Mike, I know there's a, a runner in the uh, Phillies handicap that you fancy, and then we'll get on to onto your horse in the, in the last. So which is it in the, in the 445? So I think Nia Roos here would probably be my bet of the day here. I, th- I think she'd be, she's going to take some beating. Um, she's taken a long time to come to herself. I've spoken to Roger Varian a few times about it because it, last year I thought she was going to be a real group horse. Um, she got the job done at Wolverhampton, but the time was poor, and I know she hadn't come in her coat that day. Um, she was disappointing again at Nottingham, but again, she still wasn't firing. And, and she's coming back to herself... Um, she was given too much to do at Chester last time out when she chased home a fairly good filly called Akala, um, who runs in this race again, having been a non-runner on the Monday. Um, and she runs here. She's drawn five. I just think this Goodwood, where they're going to go a better pace, she'll get a, a longer straight. And she's just taken a while to come to herself. But this filly's rated 87. And I would be very surprised if she wasn't rated much closer to 100 by the end of the year and obviously there's no prices at the moment but just for those people who listen to this kind of on on tuesday <clears> evening <throat> wednesday morning what kind of a price would you be what kind of price do you think she should be and therefore we can maybe we can assess whether or not she's a bet when we get there it might not be a bet when i want to back it yeah. if I do that. <laughs> fair enough there you go the pro punching in there uh and then in the in the last um you have got... Uh, Salute the Soldier Salute in the, the soldier, last race. Yeah. He's been a bit of a disappointing horse in that he does work like a superstar. Always has done. Um, but things haven't really gone his way. Um, and he's probably better than what he's been able to show. Um, we have a feeling that we might have been getting the trip wrong the whole time. And he might be a completely different horse over seven furlongs, ridden in a slightly different way. Wow. I love that. It's such, such secretism there in your, in your last two <laughs> ones. You're not telling us the price, not telling us what the tactics are, but suggesting that maybe it's worth keeping an eye on Salute the Soldier. I think, yeah, he's probably a win back. I don't think he's going to finish second. He'll probably get gobbled up now in the final 50 yards. But he's, he's a very talented horse. He's better than 95, but it's a hard horse to get right. Um, yeah, there'll be a way of unlocking that. I think we uh, might have something, yeah, something, to, okay. something up our sleeve. How exciting. What a way to finish. So Salute the Soldier... Uh, we wish you best of luck with, with both positive uh, tomorrow and Salute the Soldier on Wednesday, Mike, and fingers crossed for a couple of winners there. And hopefully Andy and Mike have given you a few winners on, uh, on Wednesday. We've recorded one of these for, for Tuesday. We're doing Thursday next, and we're also going to do a combined one for Friday and Saturday at Goodwood. So if you've enjoyed this, then please do watch those. Um, look out for Andy's columns every day during the Goodwood Festival. And, uh, and make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel as well for all of our preview content across all sports and for the rest of the videos ahead of what's going to be a great week at Google.